Hello everybody. I thought I'd make a little video uh, in order to demonstrate how I have made a modification to trim the end charge voltage on this uh, Elcon PFC1500 charger. And so uh, all we have to do to trim the end voltage is add some resistance between these two pins. Uh, that's pin number two and pin number five, starting from this side. So there's a pin number one, pin number two, three, four, and five. And when we add some resistance uh, in there, what that does is adjusts the voltage in the voltage divider circuit that tells the charger uh, which what amount of current, uh, what amount of, of voltage charge it's putting out, and where to finish up the charge. So basically, we're fooling the charger into thinking that it hasn't charged to a high enough voltage, and so it needs to go up a little bit higher. And we do that by adding a potentiometer and some resistance into that circuit to change the output of that circuit. These chargers come pre-programmed from the factory and it's hard to get the, them changed if they're not exactly what you need. So if you buy a used charger that was set up for someone else or if you change your battery pack configuration, um, you might not have the presets that you need to get the final charge voltage that you want. You can see this charger came with algorithm 512, and you can find these algorithms on the web um, if you do a bit of a search for uh, Elcon and the algorithm. And this one's set for 72 volts uh, using 3.65 volt uh, lithium cells. So the cells we're using are 4.2 volt leaf cells. Um, so the end voltages on this charger are not exactly what we need. Now, the cell count doesn't really matter. All that matters in the uh, constant charge, constant voltage uh, charging scenario is just the end voltage. And we need an end voltage of about 84 volts. We're actually going to trim it to 84.2 because the charger tends to push a little higher. And as soon as you turn the charger off, uh, the cell rests at a couple of points lower um, that we've learned from experience. So what we're going to do is we're going to take algorithm number seven and add some resistance in the circuit to trim 80.3 volts up to 84.2 volts. Um, you might look at this and say, why don't you trim 83.95 up to 84? And the reason is because of the way the circuit works, we would have to add a, a lot of resistance into the circuit. Um, and the scale when the voltages are so close together, is quite a bit higher. It's a bit of a parabolic curve, um, the scale for uh, changing voltage. So to change 83.95 to 84.2, we would have to add uh, approximately 8,000 kilo ohms of resistance, um, which we just didn't have a trim pot on hand. And then to change it a couple of points, um, we were talking about uh, like two or three mega ohms of resistance um, to change just a couple of points. If we have a uh, trim voltage a little bit further away, from the original voltage, we can do that with less resistance, and it just makes it a bit easier to trim. So we're gonna use a 200K ohm trim pot, and that's it. And we'll need about 143, uh, sorry, 114 kilo ohms to, uh, to trim this up to where we need it to be. In order to set the which one of the 10 preset programs we're gonna use, um, what we do is underneath this sticker, if you're not, if you don't have the cover off, underneath this sticker there's a hole, and that hole corresponds with this little micro switch right here. And if you hold down the micro switch while you plug in the charger, the LED on the other side of the charger will flash. That LED looks like that, and it will flash uh, about one flash per second. If after seven seconds you release, um, then what happens is it sets the program to algorithm number seven. And then when you, every time you plug in the charger, uh, the LED will flash seven times first to let you know that that's the program you're choosing. So this is the guts of the issue here. Uh, we've added this 200 kilo ohm trim pot on these two wires. So pin number two here and pin number five. I know that there are some people that have soldered their resistors to the inside here. So I just found it really difficult to get way down in there with the soldering iron and found it way easier to undo this one screw and pull down this plastic flap, which gives us access to the pins on this side, makes it really easy to solder. This wire just goes and coils on the other side. 
And so I have now drilled a new hole in the cover. I've kept this weather strip in here, cut it back a bit. Drilled a new hole in the cover so that this little trim pot can be accessed from outside the charger when the cover's back up. See, I've added a sticker here. And behind this sticker, there's a new hole through which you can adjust the trim pot. And the way this particular trim pot is attached, uh, counterclockwise is voltage up, clockwise is voltage down. Depending on which uh, trim resistor you get and how you wire it up, that might be the other way around. Um, that just turns out to be the one way this one ended up being wired up. So um, what I've done is I have uh, created a calculator, which you can download from the description in the video. And that calculator will allow you to plug in the start voltage on your algorithm here and the end voltage that you're looking for. And it'll tell you how much resistance you need to add uh, between those two pins to hit your voltage. So in this particular instance, uh, the calculator spit out uh, a resistance of 114 kilo ohms. And so we have a 200 kilo ohm trim pot here. So we can go from zero to 200, which will give us a trim range of about uh, 83 to 92 volts, which is quite a bit. And um, the way the circuit works is the more resistance uh, that you add, the lower the voltage. So a little bit of resistance gets you a higher voltage, a lot gets you more. And so it's a bit of an inverse when you're when you're programming it. And uh, the little calculator will help you figure that out a little bit. But that's it, it's fairly straightforward. You just need to add some resistance between here. Um, I trimmed another one to 90 volts uh, for a different battery pack. And for that one, we had to add uh, an, a standard inline resistor just like this one, not this one, but one kind of like it, uh, in line with this trim pot. Um, so we had a sort of a base resistance and then adjustable barrel resistance on top of that. And the calculator, if you put in the lowest voltage you want and the highest voltage you want, will tell you what fixed resistance to put in the line and what variable resistance to use so that you can trim within the range that you're looking for. So that's it. This one is now set to charge to 84.2 volts. And adjusting this uh, should be able to change the range between about 83 and 90 volts. So once it's closed up, really shouldn't need to be opened up again, unless someone changes the battery pack significantly, uh, in which case this little trim pot can be removed and a different amount of resistance can be added. So that's it, pretty straightforward. I'm gonna close this up now and send it off to the guy who wants it and uh, and if you have any questions you can leave them in the comments below and I will answer them if I can